Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We want to be your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition. Our number, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010, and we welcome your phone calls. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with. If you have questions about ingredients, formulations, a common or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase longevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. If you like the idea of being an entrepreneur, if you like the idea of being a health therapist or professional, well, uh, yeah, health professional, I guess you could say. Yeah, you're pretty much a health professional if you understand nutrition and you're helping people with their health challenges by using nutritional supplements. If this kind of uh, lifestyle appeals to you, if the entrepreneur lifestyle appeals to you, you owe it to yourself to check out the longevity business opportunity. Click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And you can join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself, earn thank you checks associated with having your own business, work out of your home office, right off your home office, right off your mileage. You're, uh, it's got, you get tax benefits by having your own business. It's just a great business opportunity. Even if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. And also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about fats and fatty vitamins, the ketogenic diet, which is a a, a, a diet that leverages the body's ability to get energy from fats. We've been talking about the digestive system, the stomach, the pancreas, the liver, the intestine. Basically, all as it has to do with the idea of giving the body energy, giving cells energy, the idea of energy and cellular health. We always say on this program, all disease is cell disease. And what this means is that behind... Uh, bodily breakdown, whether we're talking heart disease or cancer or autoimmune diseases or or, or even just plain old aging. We're talking about cellular bodily deterioration, what it means to be sick, what is behind the aging process that we all dread. What we're really talking about is some kind of cellular energy deficit. This is what it's all about. This is why drugs can't work. When I talk about the poisonous nature of drugs, I am not talking rhetorically, poetically. I'm not just throwing out terms and words and phrases when we talk about the poisonous nature of drugs. What we mean is, is there's nothing a drug can do to improve the energy production or facilitate energy production at the level of a cell. And if you understand that disease and aging is really about the breakdown in this energy producing machinery, you can see that drugs cannot work. It's all about cellular energy. And when it comes to cellular energy, it's all about the little tiny subcellular structures called the mitochondria. 
Now, you're going to hear more and more about mitochondrial, mitochondria and the importance of mitochondrial uh, health and the relevance of mitochondrial disease when it comes to aging, when it comes to cellular breakdown over the coming years. Over the last 10 years, it's maybe 10 or 15 years, it's become really an important part of uh, understanding how the body works and understanding how cells work, but more and more it's going to become mainstream. You're going to see su mitochondrial supple supplements for the mitochondria, mitochondrial strategies, and for good reason. Mitochondria are the energy producing entities, little energy factories that live inside the cell. And if you understand that cellular energy is what it's all about when it comes to health, well, you can see that these mitochondria have a lot of relevance. These little tiny organelles live inside a cell. You could, you could fit a couple, hundred of, uh, a couple hundred mitochondria on the width of a human hair. Each mitochondria is maybe uh, 200 times smaller than a grain of salt. You have hundreds, you have dozens, hundreds, thousands of mitochondria inside of a cell, depending on the cell. And via their uh, energy producing effects, these mitochondria are the key actors in healthy functioning cells. And defective energy production at the, level, at the level of the mitochondria plays a role in a wide spectrum of diseases and conditions, and, uh, schizophrenia and autism, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, as well as cancer and aging. Pretty much all health challenges are going to have an element of mitochondrial dysfunction. And interestingly, the mitochondria, this is quite fascinating, these mitochondria, which is so important for our health, the health of the organism, the health of the cells, the health of the tissues, the health of the organs, these mitochondria are not even ours. They're not even our own, technically speaking. The mitochondria are actually little independent entities that have somehow merged with cells in this cooperative agreement. Mitochondria have their own genetic profile. Mitochondrial DNA is different from cellular DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is distinct from the genetics of the cells that own them or that possess them or that they live in. It's crazy. You have almost, from a genetic standpoint, you have literally independent organisms living in the cell, and not just living in the cell, but giving the cell life. Without the mitochondria, cells cannot live. Well, they can, they can live. Uh, red blood cells, for example, don't have mitochondria, but they certainly can't perform the complex functions that cells are supposed to do. This is one of the great mysteries in all of biology. Why is it that mitochondria have maintained their own genetic material. Why is it that they have their own genetic material when they live inside cells which provide the genetic material for everything else? There's thousands upon thousands of different substructures inside the cells, and all of them are responsive to the genes of the genes from uh, the nucleus, the cell's nucleus, but the mitochondria have their own. In other words, if our genes are responsible for the production of all the other chemicals and all the other substructures and how all the other substructures perform, why is the mitochondria, why are the mitochondria some, somehow different? And over the years, this mystery has baffled scientists who want to know why, despite the incredible importance, the fundamental importance of these cellular uh, substructures, the mitochondria, why is it that in the cells of nearly all multi, of pretty much all multicellular organisms from, from algae to, to uh, mammal cells to reptile cells to so, uh, single cell organisms. Why is it that uh, these mitochondria have stayed independent by holding on to a few uh, very important vital genes? Well, despite our long-term relationship with these mitochondria, and we're talking billions of years, Probably, well, maybe probably a billion years these mitochondria have been involved with our cells. From a cellular perspective, a lot of how our cells and these little substructures work together is still somewhat mysterious. We still don't really know how, how these things interact. What we do know is that the merging of the mitochondria with bacterial cells, maybe a billion years ago, may have sparked one of the most important evolutionary events in all of history, giving our basics, our, our ancestors, our cellular ancestors, the ability to turn oxygen into energy. Previously, this was not possible. Previously, before the mitochondria merged, we'll talk about how this happened here in, in, uh, after the break, but how, how these, uh, the merging of these two is what allowed our primitive ancestor cells to utilize oxygen. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue this discussion when we come back from our break. 
side from farm suspend thanks for joining us we are on the air monday through friday 8 to 9 pacific and 10 to 11 central time 24 7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com actually just brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and brightsideben.com and criticalhealthnews.com contain all our longevity products and a join the team link that you can click on if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself. If you're an entrepreneur, you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, check it out. It's a great business to be in because it's win-win. You make money, you help people. You can help yourself. You can get your products at the wholesale price. At the Longevity, uh, all the folks at Longevity are, are uh, hip to the idea of self-improvement. We do classes and teach classes on sales and uh, various health subjects, health topics. De Longevity is dedicated to making the world a better place. If that sounds interesting to you, plus you're an entrepreneur, please check out the business opportunity by clicking on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470 for more information. All right, so we're talking about the mitochondria, little tiny structures that live inside cells. There's a whole class of illnesses now today called mitochondrial diseases, specifically mitochondrial muscle diseases because the mitochondria is so important for the functioning of, of uh, muscle cells and muscles. But mitochondrial disease is becoming kind of a sort of a fad, actually, in the world of healthcare, and um, for good reason. The mitochondria are important for energy production, and once the mitochondria become defective, it's almost impossible not to suffer from diseases. And by the way, uh, you don't have to have an official mitochondrial disease to be suffering from the effects of defective mitochondria. There's a, a class of mitochondrial diseases uh, specifically related to defective mitochondria, but pretty much all uh, bodily breakdown, all cellular breakdown is going to have an element of mitochondrial, mitochondrial uh, pathology, including aging. These mitochondria, as we said before the break, are almost like they're independent organisms. I'm not going to say they're independent organisms, but they have their own independent DNA, and they have a certain degree of independence. And at one time, according to researchers, they were independent. They were living the good life on their own as little bacteria when they got eaten. This is the theory, anyway. These uh, little mitochondria were just functioning on their own like bacteria do back in the days when there was only bacteria many billions of years ago. And all of a sudden, a bigger bacteria ate the smaller bacteria, mitochondria, and a, a, some kind of synergy, a symbiotic relationship was formed. Instead of the little bacteria dying, it actually stayed alive inside the cell, sort of like Jonah inside the whale, and it survived. And f nobody knows why, that for some unknown reason, this engulfing, this eating, this digesting of the little cell by, uh, of the uh, little cell by the big cell didn't result in the little cell dying, but it resulted in this miraculous and extremely successful partnership that's lasted over a billion, uh, a billion years. Fast forward many millions of years later, as you sit here listening to this radio broadcast, each of our cells... Each of your cells contains hundreds or thousands of the descendants of this original bacterial creature that is still cooperating with its host, despite the fact that after a billion years of partnership, this distinction between these two entities is somehow blurred. It's not, that's why I say they're not totally independent, but they're very independent compared to other organelles and uh, the point today where from aside from the genetics these things are so intertwined they might as well just be one thing the host cell provides protection the host cell provides food to the mitochondria the host cell supplies the mitochondria with various biochemicals and proteins and enzymes all the thing the mitochondria all the things that the mitochondria needs to do its business to run its affairs and in return as a quid pro quo the mitochondria performs the dirty work of energy production for the cell. It is the mitochondria's role to produce energy for the cell in this somewhat complicated and very messy or relatively messy chemistry. Producing energy is a messy process. Sparks fly. And so it's very functional for the cell to segregate the energy production machinery into a little organelle. And that's what the mitochondria does. The mitochondria performs the, the messy work of producing energy, of processing oxygen and sugar and fat 
with the help of minerals and vitamins and other chemicals that come from the cell to ultimately produce energy, to ultimately produce ATP. But it's not, the, the mitochondria does other things too. The mitochondria is actually an important player in, the, uh, in, in calcium storage. Calcium storage is controlled by the mitochondria. So if you have a mitochondrial problem, there's a good chance you're going to have a calcium problem as well. And calcium is extremely important for the functioning of, of a cell. The uh, mitochondria also play a role in the cell's decision to self-destruct. This is another really cool thing that cells do. They'll actually kill themselves. They'll actually commit suicide if they are defective. They're supposed to commit suicide if they're defective. Sometimes that doesn't happen, and that's where cancer comes from. Cancer cells are cells that have somehow decided that they don't want to die. Under ordinary circumstances, a cancer cell will kill itself. All cells will kill themselves. That's called apoptosis. A-P-O-P-T-O-S-I-S. -S. Apoptosis is nature's way of preventing defective cells from reproducing. It's very clever. It's, uh, they call it cellular suicide. It's a self-destruct program that kicks in, and it is the mitochondria that are responsible for initiating this process. The mitochondria are the key players in this apoptosis process. Apoptosis, by the way, is not just something that occurs when a cell is sick, but it can also occur just when a cell is not needed anymore. For example, fetal cells will apoptosize. And this apoptosis, this quality control property of the mitochondria, plays a crucial role in disease and in aging. Healthy apoptosis is part of the healthy system. Unhealthy apoptosis or unhealthy cell suicide or cells that don't commit suicide can result in big problems. It can result in defective cells reproducing, and ultimately, it's one of the reasons why cancer forms. Cancer, in many ways, is an apoptosis defect. That means cancer, in many ways, is initiated at the level of the mitochondria. If you're not getting the idea that working on supporting mitochondrial health is important, I don't know what else you need to hear. The mitochondria are the key elements in the health of the cell. Maybe the nucleus, but I don't even know if the nucleus is as important as the mitochondria. A cell can live without a nucleus, but a cell can't live without mitochondria. So anyway, the mitochondria have their own uh, genetics. They were once single cell organisms. They were swallowed up by larger cells. Instead of being digested, they settled down and developed this mutually beneficial relationship with their host that enabled their hosts to form multicellular organisms, more complex life, and ultimately all of the creatures and critters we see in the world today. Here's the thing about the mitochondria. The mitochondria aren't doing their job of, uh, of producing energy. If their wastes are not being purified correctly, you're going to age, and you're going to age fast. You're going to get disease, and you're going to get sick. And this is true about all the cells of the body. This is true about all the mitochondria and all the cells of the body, especially the ones that require the most energy, and that includes the heart. Today, scientists believe that heart disease, which is a leading cause of death, obviously, in the United States and around the world, is in many ways the result of messed up mitochondria. This is so important because there's nothing your doctor can do about heart disease because it's a mitochondria, in many ways, anyway, it's a mitochondrial issue. It has to do with the mitochondria. This is why sugar plays such an important role because sugar ultimately is very, very dangerous to mitochondria. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, coming back with more good health information and your phone calls, 844-236-6010, right after this. Right side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844 236 6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about uh, anything we're speaking about here today, mitochondrial health, mitochondrial defects, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you have questions about our longevity products or truth skin health products, or if you have a, a comment or a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. 844 236 6010 is our number. You can purchase Longevity products by calling 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or heading to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. 
Okay, got a couple lines open for you. If you're on hold, hang tight. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about mitochondria and cardio health, cardiovascular health, uh, its relationship to diabetes, what you can do about mitochondrial dysfunction. Lots you could do, actually. You know, the sun can be very helpful for mitochondrial dysfunction. Sunlight helps us, uh, is responsible for the production of vitamin D. Sun hits cholesterol in the skin. Yes, cholesterol that's stored in the skin gets converted into vitamin D. Vitamin D and cholesterol are essentially the same thing, by the way. And if you're taking a statin drug, you're going to have issues with your vitamin D production because you're not going to be producing enough cholesterol. You're going to be shutting down your cholesterol, uh, cholesterol processing machinery. Anyway, vitamin D helps turn on, uh, I'm sorry, the sun helps turn on the production of vitamin D. And then vitamin D, in turn, plays a very important role in calcium balance. And without enough calcium or it, with inappropriate calcium balance, it's inevitable that you're going to end up with mitochondrial dysfunction. So one of the best ways to help your mitochondria is make sure you're getting some sun without wearing your sunblock or your sunscreen. I know that sounds like heresy. Probably not to people who are listening to this program. It's not heresy. But if you go out there in the, quote, real world, unquote, and talk about getting the sun or, or exposing yourself to the sun rather than avoiding the sun and not wearing sunscreens, people are going to look at you like you got three eyes. When I go and do my presentations for folks who haven't heard me speak before and I say, make sure you don't wear, don't wear a sunscreen, only use a sunblock and make sure you're getting yourself a lot of sun, people look at me like I'm crazy. But the sun is extremely important, especially for the mitochondria. Exercise is also important for the mitochondria. My, uh, the mitochondria are, uh, are become more functional when they're needed. The body fun works under a use it or lose it, use it or lose it uh, principle. If you're not using those mitochondria, if you're not making those mitochondria work, they're not going to work as effectively. So you got to somehow stimulate the mitochondria. You got to activate the mitochondria. Just going out for a walk twice a day, a brisk walk twice a day, twice a day, is a great way to to stimulate the mitochondria. Relaxing. The mitochondria are very, are very susceptible to inflammation. So making sure that you're uh, activating your uh, anti-inflammatory or uh, activating your, or supporting, I should say, immune health and minimizing toxicity, minimizing the input of toxicity into the body is another mitochondrial, uh, mitochondrial health strategy. And then, there's, of course, there's wonderful nutritional supplements, which we talked about a little bit, but we will continue talking about. Uh, carnitine, alpha lipoic acid, vitamin C, coenzyme Q10, calcium, uh, lots of very important nutrients that you can use, supplements that you can use, supplements that you can take that can help support mitochondrial health. We will continue discussing all the various ways we can take, all the various ways the mitochondria are involved in our health and all the various things we can do to take care of our mitochondria in the coming days on the bright side. All right, 844 is our number. Got lines open for you, and we'll get your calls here momentarily from... Uh, the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease study suggests a biological depression, a biological basis for depression, anxiety, sleep disturbances in older adults. University of San Francisco researchers, in collaboration with the Brazilian Biobank for Aging Studies, have shown that the earliest stages of brain degradation that are associated with Alzheimer's disease, that is brain deterioration, uh, are linked to Anxiety, depression, loss of appetite, and sleep disturbances, they all happen together. And this could, according to scientists anyway, lead to earlier diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease and provide biomarkers for the development of therapies. There's something that's going on in the brain that leads to not just Alzheimer's disease, but also leads to depression, anxiety, sleep disturbances, and sleep disturbances in older adults. And guess what? If you understand how the body works, that's no surprise. Alzheimer's disease is simply a, 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 the end result of a long-term breakdown in the tissue of the brain. And when this long-term, uh, as this long-term deterioration proceeds, it's inevitable that biochemistry, biochemicals like cortisol, stress hormone, are going to be released. Stress hormone is the link between inflammation and deterioration and depression and anxiety and sleep disturbances that older adults are notorious for having, especially the sleep disturbances. I don't know anybody who's over the age of 65 that doesn't have some mild impairment of, uh, of their sleep patterns. And sometimes it can be pretty darn significant. Here's the bottom line, folks, and not just for older, older people, for everybody, but especially for older people. If you have a problem either falling asleep 
or uh, staying asleep, you have a cortisol issue. It's probably complicated by uh, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes. But those are the two main places that you want to think about if you have a sleep problem. Number one, cortisol, stress hormone. Number two, imbalances and or def, uh, issues, defects, and how you're handling sugar called dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar. Cortisol and dysglycemia are the hidden causes of all issues falling asleep, and this is why anxiety, depression, and Alzheimer's disease and sleep disturbances all go hand in hand because they all involve blood sugar or dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, and cortisol. So what do you do? Well, first of all, you relax the body. It sounds so simple, but it's just not addressed. If you have problems with falling asleep, you gotta learn how to relax the body. It starts with relaxing the musculoskeletal system, relaxing the muscles and the joints and the ligaments. How do you relax all of these? Well, there's lots of ways to do it. SDR breathing is a great way to do it. You can do a progressive relaxation technique where you just scan your body from head to toe or starting with your toes and then working yourself up to your face. And by the way, we hold a lot of tension in our face. Notice that if you have problems falling asleep, that there's tenseness in the face. Even notice it during the day. Notice it if you have anxiety. Notice that there's a lot of tension that's not, that's held throughout the face. There's, I don't know, there's got to be 80 or 90 muscles in your face. It's a lot of musculature if you're contracting. But there's especially uh, a, a very important muscle right around your jaw. Your jaw muscle is one of, the, one of the strongest muscles in the body, one of the most powerful muscles in the body. And we all hold tension in our jaw as we get older, and especially if we have is issues falling asleep or issues with anxiety. See if you notice that your jaw, you're holding your jaw really tightly. Try to just relax your face. Notice how relaxing it can be just to relax your face. Relax your eyes. Relax the muscles around your eyes. Relax the muscles in your jaw area. Heck, you can relax your scalp muscles. Just focusing on relaxing the muscles of your mouth and your jaw and your cheeks and your eyes and your scalp. Just, just focusing on relaxing these 80 muscles can have a tremendously beneficial anti-cortisol effect that can reduce anxiety, can improve sleep, uh, sleep function, improve depression, and ultimately reduce your risks of Alzheimer's disease because it's all caused by the same thing. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We are coming back with your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, talking about the mitochondria. We'll continue talking about that uh, on our next Bright Side episode, mitochondria in the heart, mitochondria play a role in acne, mitochondria play a role in all skin health issues for that matter. Mitochondria play a role in everything. They're extremely important. Uh, next in the nucleus, probably the most important structure inside of a cell. And if all disease is cell disease, well, you can see that the mitochondria are going to play a major role in all diseases. They're extremely important to understand, extremely important to, under to stress when it comes to taking care of cells and when it comes to taking care of health. health. And unfortunately, the pharmacomedical strategies, the models, uh, the pharmacomedical model strategies can do nothing, Zippo, nada, to treat the mitochondria. Doesn't matter because we can do it ourselves through all of the basic strategies we talk about on the bright side, taking care of what you eat, stabilizing your blood sugar, making sure you're relaxing, practicing SDR breathing and oxygenating, oxygenating, nutriate, respirate, move and rest. It's the, if there's a triangle of disease, we talk about that all the time, the square of health is nutriate with your mighty 90 essential nutrients as well as protein, fats, and carbohydrates from the diet and vegetables. Respirate, making sure you're practicing SDR breathing by oxygenating and blowing off carbon dioxide. They are both important. Blowing off carbon dioxide is just as important as oxygenation. The respiratory process, the cycle, both phases of the cycle are critical. Breathing in and breathing out slowly and deeply. SDR breathing. And then don't forget to move. Mitochondria are, uh, are stimulated or activated by movement and action and dynamism. And of course, long, luscious, relaxing rest. Nutriate, respirate, move, and rest. That's the fourfold square of health and basically works because it supports the health of the mitochondria. 
All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to the phones and say good morning to my friend, our friend, Elaine. What's going on, Elaine? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, and, tell, t- before you get into your, before you ask your question or, or have your comment here, Elaine, tell me a little bit about, I, I saw a post or I saw something you said about our retinol and the, uh, and you had a little sliver, a little splinter of yeah. glass or something. Yeah, tell, it, tell, us, tell, us, tell me about it and tell our listeners about that. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, in the spring, uh, well, my husband dropped a glass and I was cleaning up, didn't really notice. You know, I was wearing shoes. I was very careful. And then a couple weeks later, I, like on the top of my foot, I thought, wow, that looks like, look, I thought it was a wart. And I was using um, a wart remover type product and that was just irritating it. So I thought, well, let me try the, the 5% retinol on a band, I put on a Band-Aid, cover it, uh, and then I noticed it was getting smaller and smaller. So I thought, wow, maybe this works on warts. So it went down just a couple weeks ago so much, and I was kind of touching it, and I was like, wow, there's something scratchy in the center of that wart. And I got some tweezers, and I, I said, oh, my word. I pulled out. I got my daughter's microscope. It was this sliver of glass. That's amazing. That yeah, so now I'm just yeah. curious if it's going to completely go away. It keeps getting smaller, and I'll just keep putting the retinol gel. That's like Just keep putting it on there. Yeah. You're, yeah. On the foot, you can use it every day. You're using the 5%, right? Not the 1%. The 5%, yeah. Yeah, use the, on, on, uh, you know, on areas that are hard like that, that have a, a, a lot of substance to them, like on, on your foot, you can use it every day. In fact, retinol makes a great uh, softener for the heels. If you have really dry, cracked heels, it's a great, actually any dry, cracked skin, retinol is a wonderful way to soften it, but especially for the feet and for the heels and yeah, for calluses incredible. too. Yeah, that's great. So Good thank deal. You. Uh, Good deal. So, okay, so what's uh, going on? Yeah, if you've got time, my father-in-law, uh, he's in Denver and he's really trying to avoid this procedure called Lynx, L-I-N-X, for his GERD, um, where they put like a little... They add a little more of a sphincter surgically to the esophagus, and he's trying to avoid that, and he's really getting on the idea, hey, maybe there's this connection with what I'm eating and GERD, but he's concerned about, we, I was talking to him about doing uh, the kind of fast you talk about where you just don't eat just, anything. Yeah. Hours Is he on Nexium and or Prilosec or those kinds of things? One of them. I can't remember which one he's on, um, but... Yeah, so so he, you know what you know what Lynx is? It's basically it's basically a necklace that wraps yeah. around. It's pretty crazy. It's it's uh, yeah, titanium beads that uh, that form a necklace that wraps in, around the esophagus. that supposedly keeps the uh, keeps the esophagus from uh, from opening up inappropriately. It allows the esophagus to open up for swallowing, but it keeps the esophagus wrapped up tightly enough so that acid doesn't splash back. Which is really crazy, but uh, you know what that tells you? Uh, that shows you, Elaine. It, it's like a, the medical model admitting that it's not acid that causes the problem, but it's, but the sphincter that causes the problem. The acid isn't the issue. The sphincter is loose. As we as we age and as our body breaks down over time, things loosen. We kind of become sloppy. Our our body becomes sloppy, and over time, that happens to every part of the body and happens to the sphincter in some people. It's especially related to problem foods. That's the most important thing. Uh, GERD needs to be regarded as a food issue first and foremost. Uh, probably there's some element of what's called dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria that are involved. And it's too bad. Here's the problem with links, okay? Even if it's symptomatically effective, even if it's, and, and by the way, acid splashing back up in the esophagus can, be a, can cause serious problems. It can cause cancers, Barrett's esophagus. It's, there may, you may need links if you're not willing to do anything else. You may need you know, a mechanical intervention like that. It's kind of, it's technically a form of bariatric surgery, uh, and it requires, it, it is a surg, it's a surgical pr- uh, procedure. It's not invasive, it's minimally invasive, they say, but it's still a surgical procedure. Uh, and you may need it, but you're not taking care of the underlying problem, which is ultimately going to kill you, and that is messed up gut bacteria and a broken down, deteriorating digestive tract, including the esophagus is so important to regard it as a food issue. But here's the thing, Elaine, you know as well as I do, you can't talk to people who are in their 70s or 80s about changing the way they live, changing the way they eat. Nobody, they don't want to hear it. Does your dad want to hear it? 
No, he he is. He's he's open, and that's that's what's exciting. Is food diary, food diary. He will notice that certain foods are triggering the problem. That's how. You, so the first thing you want to do with all health issues, but especially with dietary or digest, I should say, digestive issues like GERD, food diary. Notice what foods are triggering his GERD. Now, if it gets really really bad over time, even water will do it. So if it's if it's progressed to the point where he can't eat absolutely anything, then he has to eat and do what he can do, but at least minimize the amount of food he eats. That's always a good strategy. Only eat when he absolutely has to. And then work on the gut. Stay away from foods that throw off gut bacteria. SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. SIBO pretty much equals GERD. That's a, there's a great little uh, uh, slogan or tagline for you. SIBO equals GERD. It's not exactly equals because there's other things that can do it. But for the most part, if you work on your small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, that is gut bacteria, you will do that. That's the most important thing you can do to suppress or reduce the amount of acid reflux that you get. SIBO equals GERD, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Get on the nightly essence, use fermented foods, stay away from the sugars, the, the FODMAPS foods, not just gluten, but the FODMAPS foods. Lots of strategies that you can use. Good luck, Elaine. I want to get... Uh, Get Carl the Truth Raider on before we go. Thank you so much for your call. And thanks for the, the, uh, the uh, uh, promo, the plug on our retinol 5% gel. Take care, Elaine. Okay, let's go to uh, Carl the Truth Raider. You get the last word, buddy. What's up? Yes, sir. Farmers with Ben. Hey, you know, it is time to start feeling good. I yes. decided it is time. It's time to move on and feel great once again. Thank okay. you. Now, I, I agree. Ask, yes. I was trying to find out a little bit about the, the products, but I think there's a misunderstanding. The true treatment systems are the, as you're speaking about there, the retinol gel and all, all that. Those are external products, right? I was looking for something that you had in the product line that would be internal. I, I also have like a couple truth that. supplements. No, I have a couple supplements. I have a blemish repair complex is my acne supplement. And then I also have a supplement called uh, collagen recovery complex, which is designed to generate and build connective tissue. But as it turns out, it'll help you grow hair and help you with your nails too, which is, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, market it that way, but it's, it's easy to understand why they would do that. But that's been the most interesting comments that we've been getting is that people's hair and nails are growing much faster. Um, and I, I have a B complex powder blend, uh, powder blend coming out and I have a few other supplements coming out. So right. no true treatments are primarily for the skin, but they're not right. only topical. Some of them are nutritional. Is that what you wanted to know? I want to find out something I can take. You mentioned something about bone broth. Do you have a bone broth? I line? don't have a bone broth, but there's a great bone broth protein. Uh, the, oh, I do have it at brightsidehealth.com, now that I think about it. And oh. and that brightsidehealth.com is my website for just stuff I like that I, that's hard to find and I think that are, are really important. Hey, Carl, I got to go, man. Have a beautiful day. Oh. Good to talk to you again. Sure. And thank you so much for uh, being a loyal Brightside listener. I love my smart Brightside listeners. Thank you, everybody. And it's time to go. That's it. Check out our websites, Brightside. Ben.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com for the longevity products. Click on the Join the Team link and help me and my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you're an entrepreneur, it's an ideal business opportunity. All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks a lot for listening. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.